I am going to kill you. First impressions can be powerful, but first reactions can actually save your life. How would you react if you receive a phone call and a very familiar voice says, I am going to kill you? I was born and bred in Germany and I moved to Namibia when I was 20 years old. And I spent most of my adult life as a child of the bush. And this is where we stayed when I received that oh-so-friendly phone call. As you can see, it's in the middle of the bush. Our closest neighbor lived a kilometer away. My then husband used to travel a lot and there was no security whatsoever. My kids were aged eight and 11. The caller was my ex-gardener. A week prior to the phone call, we had to let him go since his behavior had changed drastically. The morning of the phone call, I had saw him walking in the, I had seen him walking in the street on the road. Him and another guy, they were carrying heavy stuff. He was carrying a blanket that was filled with goodies. And the other guy was carrying a carpet with a very particular design. During lunchtime, my neighbor phoned me. Tabea, someone broke into my house. And he listed the stuff that was stolen. Amongst it was a blanket and a carpet with a very particular design. So I informed him about what I had seen earlier. And he asked me, can you please go to the police station and make a statement? I happily agreed. I didn't agree to the fact that he would call my ex-gardener afterwards and tell him, Tabea has seen you, where's my stuff? It was a very tranquil winter evening. It was ice cold outside, but we were cozy and warm. The pets were snuggled up in front of the fireplace. My kids were playing a board game. I was preparing supper. Everything was peaceful until the phone rang. Within seconds, my paradise had turned into a danger zone. What was I supposed to do now? I looked at my kids. I looked at my pets. I looked at my home. And looking my kids into their eyes, I decided no one is going to take this away from me. I accepted the phone call, and I accepted the death threat, and I accepted the fact that my life was about to change. But I refused to be afraid, because fear was a luxury I could not afford anymore, because it would have paralyzed me. So I refused to play his game. And I wanted to play according to my own rules instead. I needed a game changer to stay at the top of my game. So moving was not an option. Fear was not an option. And just being a sitting duck was clearly not an option. And that's what I came up with. I developed my, what I call, triple A action plan. I accepted the situation as is without judgment, because everything else would have been a waste of time. Secondly, I allowed myself to ask uncomfortable question, questions. I put myself into the shoes of my ex-gardener and I asked ask myself, how would you go about to kill you? And thirdly, I applied myself accordingly, which led to the following results. I developed a winning or a criminal mindset for that matter, which allowed me to stay at the top of my game. It heightened my awareness and I developed new skills. I did the handgun training, I learned how to shoot a rifle and I did the self-defense. So it broadened my perspective. Now you might want to know, have there been actual attempts? The answer is yes, but I don't want to bore you with the details. Basically, what ensured my survival were three things. 
my intuition, my willpower, and my ability to disrupt old thinking patterns and to ask uncomfortable what-if questions. Unknowingly, I have applied a very successful survival technique. But before I elaborate, I would like to share another story with you. Let's have a look at this slide. Who do you think has a clear advantage in this unlikely pairing? Let's see. Last year, I was on a farm. I love nature. So I decided to take a late afternoon walk to the dam, my favorite spot on that farm. And I waited till sunset, and I started walking back to the farmhouse in the last day, uh, daylight. And when I crossed the empty dam, my intuition suddenly threw one word at me, hyena. And I was a bit surprised. Why was I all of a sudden thinking of a hyena? I knew there were hyenas in the area, but according to popular belief, they don't attack humans and they don't hunt. So why was I even bothered? So I just continued walking and I enjoyed the atmosphere. And I'm not afraid of the dark, but that evening, I had this uneasy feeling that something is actually following me and observing me. Occasionally, I would turn around and take a look. But in the twinkling light, it was really hard to spot something. And I'm very aware of my surroundings and taking in the noises of your environment has become second nature. So I was aware of a mouse or a lizard here in the grass. But all of a sudden, I heard a very big mouse running towards me. It approached me from a 45 degree angle coming from behind. And as soon as I heard this noise, I instinctively turned around and said, hey, the animal stopped. It was about seven meters away from me. And I expected it to be a warthog because I had seen a warthog in that area before. But this animal looked different. It looked like a giant dog. And I noticed the sloping back. And I said to myself, this looks like a spotted hyena. And that's when I decided to step closer to move to the next fence pole. And I kicked the fence pole and I shouted, hey, again. The hyena retreated two meters into the bush looking at me. I used that time to take out my cell phone, I switched on the torch, and two glaring eyes were staring at me. Okay, I thought, it's time to send a lead SMS. Okay, other people refer to, a, to them as warning shots, but I prefer the term lead SMS, because they are an excellent tool of communication, since they create instant shared understanding. So I pulled out my pistol, I sent the lead SMS, and the hyena, the nymph flinch. She stared at me, and I stared back. We stared at each other for a minute, and then she decided, this dinner is too difficult, let me look for something else. And I simply turned around and walked back to the farmhouse, because I knew this hyena got the message, she will not bother me again. So what has actually happened? Why was I able to turn the tables into my in my favor before I even fired a warning shot? Let's have a look at the next slide. This is the survival technique I referred to earlier. It's called the Uda loop. The Uda loop was developed by John Boyd. He's a brilliant fighter pilot, or he was a brilliant fighter pilot and military strategist. And he came up with this principle because he had to make split-second decisions. And they better be good, because his life depended on them. So he intended to disrupt the action phase of his opponent, so that he was forced to start the Uda loop again, allowing him to turn any disadvantage into his advantage. Basically, the message was simple. Do the Uda loop faster or die. So, as you can see, it's divided in four phases. Observe, orientate, decide, act. So, in terms of the hyena attack, a hyena, like any other predator, are actually criminal. They want to observe you, they follow you, and then they want to ambush you. 
They rely on the element of surprise. The Aina expected me to react with fear and to be caught off guard, but I didn't play along her rules. I'm a polite human being. I addressed her instead. In terms of hyena reality, however, this is unheard of. Prey is not supposed to be wordy. Prey is supposed to run. So my unruly behavior caused the hyena to stop her action phase and she had to start her OODA loop again, which allowed me to make a decision. Had I reacted differently, I would not be around today because the hyena would have simply charged me, knocked me over and started chewing on me. Because contrary to popular belief, it's actually proven that hyenas are formidable hunters and they don't kill their prey before they start dining. So my first reaction actually saved my life. Now what happened in my OODA loop? So basically, in the observation phase, I had to realize and download my current reality without judgment that it is a charging hyena. In the orientation phase, I had to disrupt old thinking patterns by accepting that hyenas actually do hunt. In the decision phase, I had to make up my mind rather quickly if I want to be on the menu of the hyena. But I had different plans for my Saturday night. So in the action phase, I had to better apply myself accordingly. So as you might have noticed, it might be good to exercise the OODA loop on a regular basis because your light, life might change in the, split, uh, in the split of a second. So I actually want to do an exercise with you. And it's just a simple question, but you only have three seconds to answer. And I want you to think as if your life depends on it. Are you ready? Are you still alive? <laughs> okay. So here's the question. What would you do if a gunman enters this, uh, this room right now? One, two, three. Bad news. You're, you're all dead. You're, you're composting. You're actually entering the zombie stage. Why? Because you never entertained this uncomfortable question before. So you were caught off guard. I always refer to nature as being my, oh no, where's my last slide? There. Okay. I always refer to nature as being my best teacher. Why? Because nature forces you to think on your feet and they better be planted firmly on the ground. Because nature gives you, seldom they give you what if moments, but many what now situations. And having these involuntary pets, as I call them, in and around the house, they force you to learn the order loop rather quickly. They taught me to accept any given situation without judgment. They taught me how to ask uncomfortable questions. And they taught me how to apply myself. And I'm very grateful for that, because first reactions can save your life. Thank you.